Hello, everyone. Welcome. Super week done. Halfway through the LCS season. Feels like it's gone by so fast, but uh, Dom, LS, and myself here to break it all down in this week's episode of Face Check. Welcome. Hopefully, y'all are doing well and everyone's safe. My background looks a little different because I am traveling. I'm in Seattle. It's rainy. It's sad. But my best friend's here, so I, I went to come visit her and uh, her fiance. So it was it was nice. Um, Dom, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. I took uh, LPL off this morning, so I have extra energy for face check. I'm ready to really dive in and, and uh, you know, flame some plays maybe from a certain Golden Guardian support. I <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm feeling good. You had a lot of those uh, screen caps on Twitter this week, so I can't wait. Yeah. Uh, LS, how are you? Um, I'm good. This week was a lot more manageable, just all around. You know, I, I don't know why, but uh, everything's been good. Uh, been on the medication now for over a week. Things are going well. Uh, that's good. I'm, yeah. you know, and anytime we get a check in with you and and <clears throat> you're not, I guess burning yourself out for both of you, it's always. Uh, it always makes me happy, and I'm sure the whole community loves that as well. Um, let's see. Where do we start? There's there's a lot of places to start here. I guess we start with the big news uh, for the LCS. Right off the top, uh, FlyQuest's bid for a perfect season is over. We'll go with that one. FlyQuest drop game to TSM. Um, and TSM, who's strung some games together, showing off uh, their prowess as the international squad, where no one is from the same country there uh which is a lot of fun but uh, i wanted to get your take here on fly quest drop in a game it always seems to happen on a super week it always seems to be not against in a big clash like not against the best team but did this one mean anything different here for you other than the fact that hey uh the uh perfect season has gone astray here dom <clears throat> Didn't mean anything besides for the fact that those comps the TSM runs, those are just NA killer comps, man. If you just draft tanks, tanks top, you just try to outscale, like you just don't do anything too egregious. I mean, even if you die four times, whatever, it doesn't even matter. Any of those tank top comps just always work well in, in LCS. And the, my biggest fear watching this game is that FlyQuest might see this and then feel like, hmm, this is the way to win NA. We just, you know, do nothing, scale, impact, you play your tanks. Like, we just run it with, with a hyper carry. Prince is one of the best carries, and we just win LCS like that. I hope that they don't stray away from what they do best because um, they're a team that I feel like has a lot of potential, and I think that they don't have a reason to Band-Aid fix anything that they're doing wrong at this point in the season based on how everything looks. And I want to see them keep on, you know, expanding their their play style because they feel like one of the teams that actually has the capabilities to do that. Nick, what do you think? Um, oh, I just caught caught off for a second. <laughs> I, I pause every time I hear my actual name. Um, okay. Uh, no, I I think FlyQuest in general. Um, one of the things I think I was talking about, I think it was with Crowny, right? Um, was like Prince is like constantly playing different ADCs. Um, and it looks like he's just styling on the league by doing that. But I felt like um, in the games, so, some of FlyQuest's games, they have been on the losing ends of drafts, and it really does show when they start to struggle in the game. Um, I think a lot of people did predict them to go undefeated. The, T the, the, the highlight, though, is that TSM did just play a solid game of league, just mm -hmm. in general. Um, and TSM's been doing that, actually, quite a bit. And I, I made a tweet about it, which was like, Regardless of whatever we think about, like the organ stuff, um, that is that has nothing to do with like the players or the coaching staff on the team and whatnot. Um, so for FlyQuest, the only thing that I could obviously hope is that they actually put more effort into the drafting area of, of their gameplay. And then also, I, I thought it was like really weird because it looks like Prince is also itemizing almost in a way because he doesn't trust his teammates. Like I felt like both games were cr uh, Kraken Slayer games. games. They were both Kraken Slayer, Slayer games. games, and he's running Gale Force almost because he feels like he can't die or something like that. I, I don't know what the logic is, but they were easily both Kraken Slayer games, and he didn't do it in either, and we just saw how pitiful his damage was. Yeah, the Cho'Gath there is definitely <clears throat> asking for a Kraken Slayer, and instead, I think Prince skirted around a lot. I had the opportunity to chat with him uh, in one of the post-game interviews, and he said, hey, look, the draft wasn't the best but it was still us as a team execution base so he, he, he took he took the 
I guess the responsibility of not playing well, but he did highlight like, what are we supposed to do with this draft at a certain point? And so I think to your point, Dom, feeling the pressure of NA scaling tank top, got to do something to win the game and, and straying away from itemization and straying away from bigger plays there. But does this mean, uh, uh, do we, do we look at TSM any differently now? Like now that we're halfway through the season, we thought that TSM would be a lot lower in the standings. And now they find themselves as a playoff contender, maybe like a semifinalist here to go uh, to Raleigh, North Carolina. I don't think they're much better than what I, I thought previously. I, I think I had them at seventh, which was, pretty high amongst most people. I think I think that they would be decent. I mean, they, they looked the way that I perceived their team to look just on paper based off the names they had. Um, yeah, signed. I don't think that they're actually a better team than, than 100 Thieves, <laughs> and I feel like Team Liquid shouldn't need to do that much to become better than them, but, I mean, TSM does look solid. It's kind of just sad to me that NA just they, they can't get over this problem that TSM, uh, this problem of TSM. They're they're playing such a standard NA style and their laning is not good, right? Like the TSM laning is probably the biggest weakness of their team. And it just seems like it doesn't matter. They'll just be 3K gold down. They'll get into a team fight. They'll all play the team fight decently. Sometimes not even that decently. Sometimes they'll play it like at a mediocre level or even a bad level and they'll still win based off comp alone. <laughs> Um, so it's weird for me to, to, to judge TSM. Like, I don't think they have a very high ceiling as a team. Um, I'd be very surprised if they go top four, if they go top four, there's a big issue, um, with, with LCS. That means that some of the, the teams that, you know, have players that should be able to do the same thing at a, a better level are just underperforming. Final thoughts here, LS on, uh, these two squads. No, I, uh, I mean, <clears throat> no, I mean, I mean, I think Dom just really hit the nail on the head on, on all of that. Sweet. Well, uh, perfection gone, but the team with the longest win streak in the league, and we could base it off of schedule, but they're at least playing to what they should be if they want to be in that spot is Golden Guardians. Five games in a row, and if you look mm -hmm. back at their schedule, they played the top four teams in their first two weeks and had to use the substitute uh, Young, who was, you know, promising and a rookie. How many times do we say that? But uh, in comes Gory, and the team looks completely different. And I said it last week. And so, uh, you know, I like to take accountability when I mess up. I was like, ah, Stick say, you know, he's just kind of there. Dude put in a shift and got player of the week for this week. He had a hell of a week. It wasn't that he had to make a ton of plays, but the times where he had to make plays, he did. And uh, part of the winning streak for Golden Guardians. And so I wanted to give them a shout out. Five games in a row. What do we think here, LS, uh, of this squad? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, I, th I think Golden Guardians, uh, I, I mean, I remember saying that when Gory came in, I thought that it would be him or another mid laner, right, as the top two um, in the league, and he is making a tremendous amount of impact, right, for Golden Guardians and the team, but also because I think the mid laners in NA are so terrible right now. That <laughs> okay, Gory, I, I like, knew, I knew as it was going to come. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Gory, Gory as an import is like slotting in right now. Like, if, if, if the other weird thing about this is that like even the top laners in NA, I mean, I guess there's fudge impact in someday, right? Um, so Summit is, he has more to go up against in top lane that I, I think it's also really hard because I think a lot of those players are very experienced. Um, especially just like handling what Summit's trying to do and then Summit's like running it down. But there is no one in mid lane um, because the, the, the Gory, I mean, some of the mechanical players, like you have like Palafox, who I think got like 800 LP um, in, in Korean solo queue, right? Um, but Palafox, I think, has horrendous decision making in a lot of instances. So like e even um going up against him and then you look at some of the other mid laners like jensen and uh bjergsen and, and literally no flame to either one of them jensen when he was here last summer uh was like 200 games on a riot account still playing in d1 uh mmr um mechanically jensen is extremely bad that the reality of the situation um bjergsen um not this latest boost boot camp with 100 thieves but the one before that bjergsen very similar struggling versus diamond korean players um, mechanically. Um, and I think that this leads them to try to gravitate towards more of the experience and, and control approach to like the laning phase to just like sort of get through it. 
Uh, and then Gori comes in along with like Vikla and, and these other mid laners. And there's a very noticeable difference. And with Jojo, like just having a very hit or miss so far, like uh, mid lane split, mid lane is just looking completely disastrous all around. Jojo kind of looks like uh, in Space Jam when they like sap the the monsters, sap like the the talent for a little bit. That looks like Jojo in his bad games. It's just like, <laughs> what's going on? We know how good you can be, but then he kind of disappears. Dom, you knew this mid lane talk was coming to weigh in. How do you feel about it? I think Jojo just. I don't think he's bad. You know, it feels like he's one of those players that. We'll get it together when he when it matters. He's just kind of like a little bit carefree. Like he's just not he doesn't feel like he needs to focus as hard in the games. He doesn't need to try as hard in the games. He doesn't want to do things that feel bad within the game, I would say. Um, like there's times where you just have to drop a wave or you have to respect a gank. And it seems like he just wants to walk into mid lane and just shit on the other mid laner as hard as possible. And if he gets ganked, like so be it, you know? But he's gonna do whatever to just get the, these minor leads. Um, which is kind of similar to how like Summit plays, but Summit just does it a lot worse. And also Summit is doing it with champions that don't scale. So like if you're doing Renekton, if you're playing Renekton, it's Jax and you play a matchup to just be up 20 CS and you die once the whole matchup changes. But a lot of right. the times when you're playing mid lane matchups, like uh, uh, like Azir lanes and, and, and stuff like that, you're still going to be relevant in the game, even if you um, like have a, a mistake happen or you, you falter at some point. So I feel like Jojo is just pushing things too hard when um watching it play overall gory is better than i expected um i heard he was good at psg did he win mvp of pcs i don't watch any pcs but i think he won mvp or he was like close to to, to that standing i'm surprised to see uh you know him doing well in, in na because i think last year was really confusing um he came over from lck to lpl most people thought he was going to be good immediately Similar to, um, for example, like Dove playing mid for IG right now within within LPL. When Dove was a mid laner in LCK, he was probably like a sixth best mid laner or something around there. I think Gory, when he was in LCK in the same year, was about the fifth best mid laner. He looked a little bit better. Um, but when he came to LPL, he was just bad. Like he was just not playing at a level that you would expect uh, of him. He was one of the worst mid laners in the league and he ended up getting replaced and kicked so i mean the trajectory was looking rough it went from lpl to pcs and, and i mean really the way it works in like lpl is if you play poorly in lpl you just go to pcs or if you're trying to break into the lpl you go through pcs to show yourself and then if you perform well enough you go to um lpl it's kind of just like a feeder league uh in, in a way right. i i view it almost as like a mini like kind of like a different ldl it's another academy system for them um so seeing Gory then come to LCS and join a team like Golden Guardians, I was not sure what to expect, but it feels like he's been good. It feels like he's been one of the better mid laners. I also think that him having River as a jungler is helping him a lot. It seems like oh, they're yeah. just the part of the team that makes things happen. Having the double Korean mid jungle is, is, is kind of OP. Um, and I think River's been playing pretty well. I mean, he's been, in my opinion, one of the best junglers in, in LCS so far over the first um, nine games. Just seems like he has a better idea of how to play certain situations. He had that really nice flank um, on Vi in one of the games where I was like, damn, how many other junglers in LCS would go for that? Because that is not something that NA players normally do. They're really uncomfortable going for flanks and being alone and doing something that might make them look like an idiot but could win them the game. Like, it feels like that is just not an NA LCS play. And seeing River do that uh, made me feel like, you know, Golden Guardians as a, as, as a whole is actually a pretty decent team. The problem for me on this team, it's not Stick it's not Huhi. The problem is always Licorice. I feel like Licorice is just straight up bad. Oh, like they're Jesus. playing 4v5. Yeah. 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 They're playing 4v5 in a lot of these games. The the Leeson game is actually like I, I literally think that if you did if you had like just a bot laning against the other guy, right? And it's not, not like a bot as in an as as in an intermediate bot. You just have like a robot laning against the other guy and just making sure that the Jax doesn't get a million kills in that game, and then you removed the bot from the game and you played the rest of the game 4v5, I think Golden Guardian still would win. That Lee Sin literally was not a champion for um, the majority of that game. and Until the kick know, at the it, very end. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, he kicked in the fountain. Nice, bro. Like it's, It was just sad to watch. And a lot of their, their fixes don't make sense because you would think, okay, well, Licorice is not the best. Let's just have him slot into the role that Solo's slotting into, where you play tanks, you don't even lane them that well, but at least you're going to be more useful in a team fight um, than you would be on Renekton. But it seems like they just want to play like Renekton and Lee Sin, but then go like this off tank Renekton build, where for me, it's like you're either going Renekton into multiple melees and going a Gore Trigger, or you're going the Assassin Renekton. I don't think that this 
jock show slash radiant virtue redacted like radiant virtue redacted where the fuck did that come from who's going radiant virtue on redacted especially with the way that like redacted interacts in fights you don't want to just straight up front to back a lot of the times you'll be all right. be off on the side you'll pop your ult to like generate some fury so that when you like flash stun you'll actually have an empowered flash stun but he's just playing radiant virtue redacted like straight front to back i don't know what the fuck mm -hmm. is going on in top lane but i feel like it, this is the biggest issue for golden guardians right now they have they have this weird identity top lane which i guess is better than having no identity but it it's not an identity that I think makes any sense. Yeah. And remember, this is the guy that I'm pretty sure we, we heard earlier in the split that Golden Guardians have come out and said, you know, him and Stixay haven't had a nucleus around them for a while that has allowed them to excel. And now we're like, well, this nucleus is the one that's getting a lot of the credit here. So uh, we'll see how Licorice does moving forward. Just a quick shout out. Just because, again, this is live, not pre-recorded. Uh, Empire, head of scouting for Evil Geniuses, hopped into the chat and said, uh, best laning stats in the league for any mid laner equals uh, bad split for JoJo. So uh, he had to come and defend his boy out there. I will double check to see if that's true. But I assume the head of scouting wouldn't just make something up on the spot. But that doesn't matter. Laning, laning stats doesn't mean that that doesn't matter. I mean, he's playing redacted like every game. So, uh, for, JoJo, for, like, JoJo, for JoJo, for JoJo, for JoJo, for JoJo, 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 yeah. Oh, for for JoJo's laning stats? <clears throat> oh, yeah. Wait, yeah but you, you can to, you can have the best laning JoJo? stats and not be the best mid laner. Because we league. were talking about Gory, and then we're talking about NA mids. And yeah, yeah. You, you can stuff. you can have the best stats and not be the best mid. H like, having a bad. That, does that not make sense? To how 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 does someone not understand that? How how can how can someone not understand that you can have the best stats and not? Like that, 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 that has to be ironic. It has to yeah. be an ironic. I, I just want to make sure that we're arguing the right point. I didn't want to make, bring up a different point. He just said that us calling it a bad split for JoJo while him having. Well, the best no, he's hit or stats. miss. I mean, his first few games, we, we saw him running it down. Yeah, but I mean, it's also like leading stats overall. Uh, you, you can't really judge that because, like, so for example, he had that game where he's like 40 CS up over Young. So he's playing versus like a substitute mid laner and he's 40, 40 CS up. Um, you know, taking plates, he's up a ton of gold. Like that's going to yeah. skew his stats so so heavily in in yes. one direction that he could be generally losing to the rest of the table. Like let's say he's on average down five CS, but then he's up forty CS that one game. Well, based on the fact we've only had nine games, now he's even in lane. Even though he's like, right. like I, I literally said he's hit or miss. I, 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 <laughs> what are we what are, what are we saying? But he, he literally runs it in so many situations. He also yeah, he has was... like two meme images, right? He has he has the rise ultimate. Right, like he he has like <laughs> he has some iconic moments of just utter failure in games. Um, so that's why I said he's hit or miss. Uh, Vickle is not hit yeah. or miss. Gory's not hit or miss. Yeah, they haven't been yet. They haven't been right. yet, and so we'll keep an eye on that. And you know, <clears throat> I, I can't wait to see uh, good JoJo against what uh, Gory and um, Vickle can bring here later on in the split. Hmm. Um, speaking of mid laners. Let's move to another one of the big news of the week. Skipping, I guess, to the end of the week. Uh, mid lane swap here for Cloud9. Uh, Diplex going to head on down to Challengers. And here comes the hyped youngin, I guess, that's been tearing up Challengers. Uh, Eminez. Am I saying his name right? Eminez? Eminez, I think it's yeah. Eminez. Yeah. yeah that's what Eminez is going to be hopping in here. Um, we knew that at some point this might happen. It felt like Diplex was doing his job. I I really felt like in the throw that I think it was Team Liquid gave them uh, last game. He was doing his job on Victor, getting the lasers down, had a couple of gravity fields that, that did super well. But uh, Cloud9 going for the most optimal team build here. What do you make of this move here, LS? Um, well, there's a couple of things. One is I actually wonder what the relationship is with Diplex, with like Eminus and others, right? Because of the last like tweet that uh, Eminus had, um, which was like, I mean, that's probably the most toxic thing that we, we've seen of him, at least since he's joined C9. Um, I don't know if Joe will pull it up on the screen, but like um, Diplex seemed non-existent in a lot of C9's games. Um, he didn't even really seem like a role player, like what was Jensen uh, doing. Um, I do think that he had like some mechanical moments, which is what he was supposed to be, you know, heralded as uh, coming into LCS. Um, but again, he was touted as supposed to be this player that was going to come into LCS, be really, really, really mechanical uh, player, uh, be very potent and just be very good all around. And we got the opposite of that. We got someone that just sort of goes through laning phase, 
doesn't look problematic, but it's probably really hard to look problematic when you're surrounded by the other C9 players as long as you're just going even. This was the situation with uh, with Jensen, right? Um, so Eminus coming in, monstrous stats in Academy, um, and what a lot of people are going to try to tear him down for is obviously his reputation uh, with toxicity, right? They'll say that he's been kicked from so many different teams um, and whatnot and yada, 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 yada. Um, but they'll they'll display and exert uh, cognitive dissonance over the fact that there's been many 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 pro players that have done absolutely you know vile things in the past. Um, I like there was that one comment that was like defending him, where like you know Caps used to literally wish death threats on people and and you know say that he hoped they get cancer and like all this other stuff or like the DDoS stuff that used to happen back in the day and a bunch of other stuff from like people that are now fine. <laughs> I agree with the sentiment that all that really matters is like the last couple of months um, for someone, unless they've done something truly heinous. Tom, you want to weigh out in this situation? That was kind of yeah, like more uh, of like the, I guess, the uh, perception of Eminus. Yeah. yeah, I'm also for prison reform. You know, the the goal should be re rehabilitation and not punishment. So <laughs> he's been re rehabilitated, and now he's ready to play in the the LCS. That's all I have to say. Way. Yep. All right. <laughs> Do we feel like Diplex's play warranted this move, Dom? Yeah, I mean, I think he's decent in lane. He's good in lane. I mean, a good in lane for NA standards. I mean, he's not actually anything special in lane, but his laning is better than Jensen's was. But yeah, he doesn't sure. play the map particularly well. And I don't think his team fighting is amazing either. So it definitely felt like he was just not really part of the team it felt like he was just not on comms with the rest of them like the rest of the team is just existing and then he's like okay i guess i go to the side lane here and i just do my own thing i hope that the upside will be there for this squad i mean what are the games that they lost they lost against flyquest uh, yep and who and eg and eg right i mean yeah they have two good losses like to yeah be honest, they're better than <laughs> the bad teams and they're yeah, I mean, they're competing with, with EG. I think that was heavily draft dependent. I think FlyQuest is going to beat them no matter what. So, I mean, at worst comes to worst, I think you could always make the move back, but I don't think you really lose anything by trying out um, MS and seeing if he actually is somebody that can elevate the team because they definitely seem capped. They don't seem like with um, Diplex, they would be able to be a top, top team. And maybe with Eminus, if, if he actually is a lane dominant monster and he's getting solo kills and he's in the same you know tier as as, as vikla and, and gory for example maybe they do become a, a better team they're actually one of the best teams in the lcs so we'll have to see we'll have to see uh how he performs but i don't think you risk that much by trying it at this point also with the way na format is you know you're still it's not lec right you don't have to be good next week this is not a best of three for your for your tournament life or something you could play him for five, six games, which is a good amount of time, right? It's three weeks before the Super Week. Um, and then if it's not working out, you can go back to, to Diplex and probably still place top three. We have it early on. Uh, Eminem had himself a crap ton of solo kills, and it was something that they kept uh, touting on the uh, Challengers. I path to Pro website. It was like 16 solo kills in six games. So we'll keep an eye on what happens uh, moving forward with this squad. One thing that did happen, though, and I, I, it leads to the question later on. But one thing that did happen, though, was uh, Sven and Jan. So Cloud9 win a throw by TL, which TL seems to be pretty good at lately. Uh, and at the end, uh, Sven, in his big, tall stature, <laughs> walks right through Jan's handshake. It was sick. And great job on the production team, the cameraman, to like zoom right on in. It's this smirk that Sven has. He just straight looked at him, gave him the smirk, and walked by and became like <laughs> like just a badass villain for like a PG movie. Now, this then spilled on over to a couple of tweets. Sven explained what happened. I didn't shake his hand after the match because he called us worse than our academy team, which is like weird. Like, why is Jan popping off at Cloud9 and saying stuff that actually isn't even true? And then Jan... <laughs> Claps back with a little bit more context. Not worth the apology. Uh, in game, I see someone uh, fire something at my mid lane, and then instantly I'm gonna mute you. You don't have to apologize. So here's here's the moment. Hugs early on. Yeah, uh, Berserker loves everyone, especially when he wins. Jan giving the dap against his thing, and look at this. Just 
It's Damn. so good. It's so good. Uh, I Let them know. know. So uh here's here it is. Worse than our academy team. Back to Academy. There it is. We got the in-game uh clapbacks here. I kind of want to get your thought on this, and then I'll hit with the follow-up question. What do you think of this kind of shit, Dom? Like, did did did, did people make too much of a too much of a <clears> deal about it. this? I love I live for the hatred, man. Hatred fuels me. I wake up based off only hatred. I don't even need an alarm clock. So when I see this type of shit, it, it makes me want to watch LCS even more. And also, like, Gion could also be correct here. That's the only thing that people haven't given credit to. Because TL is also worse than their academy team. So maybe they're both <laughs> just worse than their academy team. Like, <laughs> you're, you're not actually saying anything of context. People have to, you got to think, man. You got to think when you see stuff like this. Really break it down. <laughs> oh my god ls uh, maybe what, maybe zven is actually you know defending uh team liquid with this comment because diplex is going back to an academy team now oh, you know no. like without context oh, i mean it's no! really difficult it's really <laughs> difficult to sort of read in here you know maybe he's just mad at yun for leaking it before you know c9 posted the news That's like who knows <laughs> no one's safe no one's safe even your own team Zven is just <laughs> shooting at everybody. Uh, so then there, there was a lot of reaction to it. Do you just feel like the community overreacted, said like, oh, this is no, VM? Like, this most is good people shit. liked it. Most people liked it. There was just like a few people that are just mad about everything that you just fucking mute those accounts. Literally mute those. I didn't see any of the hate because or like the people that were against us because all those people that are that fragile have already blocked on Twitter. So I didn't even know that there was any backlash at all until I started looking into it and like seeing some fucking quote tweets and shit. Most people liked it. Almost everyone liked it. It makes it fun. This is what you need in the LCS. So, like, I, if people don't like it, whatever, bro. They probably don't watch sports anyway. Who the fuck doesn't like seeing a beef between players, like, in an NBA game or something? Like, like all th the that, people... It, it was all the people that loved seeing Prince cry needing double lift after beating him. They're like, wow, that, that, that's what the LCS is about. I, I mean, both are good. That. Both yes. are good. Literally, yes. both are good. You You have, like... You just want to have more emotions when watching the LCS. You want to be hyped because of like the beef. You want to feel that um, that good feeling. You want to feel that that warm feeling inside yourself when you see two players respecting each other. You just want to feel something when you watch LCS. For so long, the LCS was fucking dead when it came to emotion. You d you didn't feel anything. You were just sitting there just watching. Like, all right, I guess we got another game of Golden Guardians versus Dignitas. Let me uh. Let me check. And then you just look at your chat and there's fucking tumbleweeds and just like dust going through. And it's like, hey, guys, does anyone still care about this shit? When you see this, you want to watch the next C9 versus, versus TL match. I wish they went farther. I want to see a fucking like celebrity boxing match segment in here where they just have Yeon versus, versus fucking Zven. He cuts some weight, like Yeon ups his weight and they just fucking go at it. That's what I want to see. Um, then the question after all this that I'm excited about, because I always love opening the history books with uh, Dom and LS. This is like my favorite, I don't know, trope skill that we do. What is the biggest beef that we've had in League? We'll, ke we'll, we'll keep it broad. We can call it League, but, you know, we can go LCS League. What, what are some of the big <clears throat> beefs and shit talk moments and, and whatever that are just great? One that comes to mind way back when Imp made fun of Piglet crying when they won winter in that, like, uh, like that pregame interview stuff. That, that was super funny <laughs> because Imp just was ruthless and was like, I don't care. You felt bad. You cried. Did you see him cry? <laughs> uh, what, are, what are some of the other ones that you got, LS? Uh, wait, give me time to think. Dom's gonna go first. All right, Dom, you go first. I'm trying to, I'm trying to, trying to think about some of like the biggest beefs we've had between between players. I feel like they like people don't normally have that much public beef. Yeah. Um, upset versus Adam is probably the one where. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just I, like upset versus Adam is the one where. Like lonely wife uwu, and then Adam just ran it down for a split and got kicked out of <laughs> LEC for a split afterwards. I don't know. I thought that was a that was a pretty that was a pretty cringe beef, but it was probably it was a really significant beef where <clears throat> obviously a lot of people were invested in it. Yeah, that was actually a really good one. Chat chat's kind of popping off. Uh, a bit well, here. I mean, I I have one, but I don't know if the information is like public yet. 
I mean, well, I'll, then I'll, don't, I'll, don't I'll implicate I'll yourself. It. Don't implicate I'll yourself. Loop. Huh? No, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's how many years? How many years is this? Hold on, wait a minute. What's Hold the on, statute of li limitations up. on this? Type Usually, of stuff? it's like seventy or eighty years or something. So <laughs> okay, it's been, it's been, no, 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 it's been, it's been a couple murder, of years. Man. It's been, like, it's been a couple of years. It's been a couple of years. Um, one team completely ran it down in a major tournament because one player slept with another player's girlfriend the day before the match. Damn, that sounds like a lot of early League of Legends. <laughs> I don't know which okay. one that is. All right. That's fine. Reddit detectives chat. Go to town here. Uh, if you think you know what this one is, let us know in the comments <laughs> <laughs> over at the Esports Bed YouTube channel where this video will live. For those of you watching it live, put it in the chat. We'll see if we uh, get any of these here. Uh, come off. Uh, we're seeing uh, a, lot of, a lot of Reggie mentions. Reggie hotshot. Reggie no, it's not, it's not, double it's not, lift. It's not, no, 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 Reggie it's not, against not that, TSM. Lot. No, no, no. I, I know it's not that I mean, one, double, but double if Reggie is probably one of the biggest, too, no? Yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty big. Those, those are pretty big as well. That, that, that must be the largest, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this one, this one is, like, all on the rift, though. Like, I think that was, that was kind of an interesting caveat for this one with Zven and Jan. Like, we, we got a piece of it in the game, and for whatever reason... I, I don't even know... Why duck ass? Joe, how did... Where did you find the chat? So where where did we get the logs of the in-game stuff? Where did, where did that come from? I I wasn't even aware of that. I assumed it was going to come out, but yeah, we so pretty much what happened was pretty much people that have access to the tournament realm are just yeah. from any league and there's a guy Molecule who I think is a analyst for one of the teams who screenshotted it and put it on Twitter and then you know, he eventually deleted the screenshot, but as soon as he screenshotted the logs, then everyone was, you know, privy to what happened. Yeah. So the first thing was the the Diplex XDDD, which is completely justified, by the way. Did yeah. you see what the fuck Harry did in the game? Like, in the Drake, I lost in my the mind. dragon fight? Yeah, dude. No, no, no. The dragon fight was not was not the beginning of it. We got we got to show it, Joe. Let me let me find it. It's a C9 versus a TL. It's it's when he walks up to the mid lane turret and he just gets straight up Victor W'd and dies. I have no idea what the fuck he was thinking when I watched this happen. It was just so crazy to me. All right, hold on. Uh, it is before 12 minutes. Uh, okay, I found it. It is at around 1240. Yeah, it's around 1240. So 1239 in C9 versus TL in game time. This is crazy, bro. Look at Harry. Huh? What the fuck? He just wouldn't get it. <laughs> Are you a mid laner? Yeah, I, I don't get it. I'm not a mid laner. So LS, I saw you. You broke down um, Adam's, uh, you know, <laughs> Adam show play in the top lane. The f the five yeah. minutes of, of Adam running it down. Yeah. So could you break this down for us? I, I would like to know why walking up to the turret for a plate on a zero when you're already up twenty CS is yeah. worth inting the whole game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's pretty good. All right, no. okay. Yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Well, I want friends like Yon that are going to defend me when I do shit like that. So, uh, shout outs to the <laughs> Academy duo of, um, I mean, I guess the LCS duo, the former Academy duo of TL, look, TL's LCS squad. Look, does anyone else want to shout topic. out Pioshik for walking around the map in human form? <laughs> does anyone else want to like point this out? <laughs> that Pioshik's like perma walking around in human form in a <laughs> Bro, he doesn't know when he's going to end up in a fight, right? I bet he doesn't even know that a least spider form has more MS. I actually just, I want to bet that he doesn't know. <laughs> uh, it's fine, bro. It's fine. It's fine. Did you see the flank at the end? Did you watch this game? No, no. I had to go. I had, because I'm moving. And I had I had the lawyer stuff, so I, I couldn't actually watch the game. Oh, you should watch the end of this game. Oh, let's, you want to just show oh, it? Yeah, yeah, show, show Pioshik just go on the fucking secret agent mission at the end of this game. It's the best, bro. It starts around, uh, let's let's go 3944. And just we just keep eyes on Pioshik. Okay? Eyes on the minimap. There he is. You're going you're gonna to take a pit stop for wolves? Or... Nope. He's still flanking. <laughs> okay. okay. He's still flanking. So he's been yeah. flanking now for 30 seconds? Yeah. He, he's All right, almost he's still there, flanking. Actually. He's almost there, yeah. Wait, he's oh. still flanking? Oh, he, does, he still doesn't have the ankle. I think, Purple bubble. I think he wanted crab, actually. This whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he's still going, he's still going, he's still flanking. Keep it going, keep it going. 
Oh, you think he's done? Oh, hell no, he's not done. He's running it back. <laughs> he's running it back all the way back around. Holy shit, is he trying to flank the wave now? I, I can get the next wave, guys. Uh, well, they already have a wave. Piyoshik, you need to base. No, I got the next wave, guys. I'm hitting the wave. I'm hitting the wave. All right, Wait, I'm basing. Did basing. he start wolves before we started recalling? That was a solid, like, one minute of him oh, okay. just running around in a circle. You wouldn't get it. <clears throat> well... <laughs> You can't use the same excuse. It's not you wouldn't get it. You don't play jungler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I play jungle. I still don't get it. That's how fucking clueless I am. <laughs> I mean, it, it really it is what it is, man. I was I was He's seeing that. Champion. I didn't know what to He's say. A world champion. What do you got? I got well, nothing for that. Yeah, I agree. it was a little crazy. Well, if if you want more insight, I'm gonna plug myself again. If you want more insight on how the team is faring, I had an interview with Marin, and we had to cut out. A lot of the dead space. Dude, I watched the Team Liquid squad thing. I'm so sorry. Marin's like yeah. gaslighting his players in Team Liquid what? squad. It, into there's what? there's into... like the feedback. That I, I, I'm so sorry. I just have to point it out. There's like the thing where he starts going over the feedback. So one, by the way, when you're writing down notes that you're going to talk about immediately after the game, why are you using a fucking notepad when a phone exists? Right, like that. That one just doesn't even make sense to me. What do you mean? Right? He you, likes you have a phone. no. Wait, 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 wait. Then, he, he likes the feeling of writing it down. Yeah, on a, I guess paper. so. It makes you look more sophisticated. And then uh, two, he's like just saying things that are that are just untrue about the game in the feedback. And I'm like, what? and then the players are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. <laughs> I don't know. So uh, yeah. Anyways, go ahead, Degon. What, what about it? You just want to get a feel on 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 kind of the responses that they had and we had to cut out a lot of the dead space because it was so tense it was just it was probably the most tense interview i've ever done yes it was a lose side interview but that's why i grabbed a coach and not a player and <laughs> uh he had to pick his words very meticulously and it so it took a lot of time for him to think about it and it just i kind of wonder like hey first time head coach right kind of you know, out of retirement for a little while and with all these superstar players and a lot of people pulling in different directions, that was his main point. He was like, we just need to get all on the same page. Right now, everyone is working hard, but they're working hard not together. Feels very uh, Physical 100-esque if you guys have seen that over on Netflix. Um, so hopefully uh, they'll be able to do it. You can check that out in a couple of other the interviews that we had with, uh, with some of the players and teams. Had one with Boogie? as well yeah with tsm so anyway i uh, just wanted to call that one out because it was just so distinct from all the other interviews i got prince after a loss as well but prince like took it well marin was it was business baby and it was a little scary business all right Damn. uh let's see what else do we have i think we had one more one more thing no nah, that's the beef stuff um oh joe did you do you have the uh the one that melina sent you the secret one the next one? Okay, go ahead. Let's fly it. So I haven't told these two guys yet, but we're doing our mid-season awards where we're going to make up an award and give it to a player. And Dom, this is, I think, where you can go ahead and shine. Uh, no pun intended with uh, one of them there. So let's let's start with you first. It doesn't have to be that. It doesn't have to be the Zonias, but it could be whatever you want. A mid-season award to give out, whether it's a serious one, whether it's a play one. The floor is yours for your mid-season award. Yeah, I'll go. I'll give my uh, mid-season award to Pioshek for uh, biggest fraud. That's what I'm. <laughs> that's what I'll give. He he gets biggest fraud for sure. I mean, he really hustled TL. I mean, it's it's not quite a sword art hustle. I mean, sword art's hustle was pretty much to the highest degree you can ever hustle somebody, but. This hustle was strong, man. He took that that world championship, and I don't know how he was able to just delete all the vods of his play for the last like two years of, of of LCK and just only show that to TL when he when he applied for this position. But my God, he he really hustled uh, Steve for the whole bag here. So yeah, respect to him. Biggest fraud. All right, um, can we can we etch that in there, uh, Joe? Can we etch it on the trophy? That's why That's why there's little plaques on the bottom. You're going to have to etch it twice. Once on this screen and then once on the uh, the three trophy one. So we'll wait for that to get in there. Is there a bigger fraud here, LS, than Pioshik? Probably this split. Uh, 
I think. In the LCS. Hmm. Yeah, in LCS, yeah, I'm thinking. Um... Yeah, I mean, I, I... there's not, is there? Actually. And maybe it could be like Jensen or something. That's like oh, the I only mean, other. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, you could say Armut. You could say Armut, Armut right? Yeah. Armut, yeah. Yep. Armut's a Armut and yeah, Armut's a pretty big contender. Armut's an honorable mention, but yeah. uh, okay. I feel like he's legit the best player on his team though, which is saying something about Dig. It's Ignar. Ignar's the best player on their team. He's only played like a couple <laughs> games, but yet. he's played three <laughs> games. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. Three games, yeah. I mean, he's drawing a Rakan ban. It's same as Ignar as uh, as uh, Armut. They're just getting a fucking Nar Rakan ban one, two, three. Most of the games, boom. Open up the draft and the other players can't carry. All right, there we go. Uh, Piercing face right there in the cup. Uh, biggest fraud. Okay. Um, LS, let's have you go next. Uh, you can create the award on the fly and give it to whoever you want. Well, I just said what our move. Is your mid-season award. It doesn't have to be biggest fraud. It could be anything you want it to be. It could be positive. Oh, we could be positive on this show sometimes. <laughs> sometimes, uh, guys. Uh, I can't, but maybe you guys can. Hello. I feel like I'm doing. What's the talking to the wall meme? <laughs> <laughs> the donut wall. Yeah, How much of a wall. boomer are you? <laughs> What's the talk to the wall meme? I don't know. Uh, oh, I think. Wait, it has to be LCS, right? Face? The Kook. Kook, Kook, Koopa. Thank you, Donna Wall. Kek W. Ah, Kek W. That's the one. Yes, yes. Wait, is it LCS only? Yeah, LCS only. All right. Thanks, Joe. Come on, man. Um, LCS only. I think most improved player, like okay, this is or, I mean, I think most improved is probably Winsome. Hey, that's, that's saying something. Oh what? man, no, come on, man. I think that's that's like that feels that feels good. That feels like a good award. He's he stepped well, in the role. There's times yeah. where you forget that Ayla's the starter. Ayla's stuck in Visa Hell. I don't know if they're even going to use Ayla at this point, no? I, I think the intention is, right? Uh, from I would imagine the intention is, but what actually happened? So, like, there's, like, the Korean, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's, like, yeah, yeah. the Korean fucking, Korean like, uh, pride or whatever you want to call it. Like, you know, like, maybe, maybe the other Korean players are just like, yeah, we're going to keep winsome. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I mean, they have a Korean coach too, right? So exactly, exactly. So like, I I think there's a, le a legitimate chance that like Ayla, this happened before, right? Where some player got like sick and lost their starting position. Oh, oh, I, it I, was uh, it was Centaurin and, and Grigne, right? Yeah, uh, no, uh, that was different though. It, it was, they would have played Santorin. They would have played Santorin. No, it, it was Acadian. Acadian. Acadian and and Grig. oh yeah, Acadian and, and Grig. Okay, yeah, yeah. Were Santorin and Grig ever on the same team? Yeah, it was it was the finals. It was the finals against Cloud Nine. Yeah, but he didn't. Santorin didn't lose his spot to Greg. Right, 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 right. right. No, he had the but, migraines. He had the medical. But the one medical. before yeah, yeah. was Acadian and Greg. The one before mm. was Acadian and Greg. That was. Yeah, but was I don't correct. think I don't think Santorin ever lost his spot to Greg. Correct. 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 Yeah. Correct. Mm. Um, that's a good one. All right, Winsome's on there. Um. Hmm. I, you know, I came up with a segment and then I didn't think about what my award would be. I, I would say, I guess it's going to be something nice. It is going to be something nice. It's going to be something it, so nice. It's, like it, it's not going to be overly nice. I, I think this is just one that we've kind of glossed over a little bit. We touched on it, but I think a lot of TSM success has come from, I guess, most like my most improved player playing to their worth is maple i feel like maple's played pretty well uh yes you, we've talked about no one on tsm lanes super well but maple lanes the best out of all of them and he's played a lot of these team fights very well you could call out chime for that squad you can call out solo for just having you know been born in north american solo queue mentality but i feel like someone's had to be the leader of that squad and i, I feel like it's maple and maple's done a, a really good job being the piece that they've rebuilt around so um you know, shouts uh, uh, Maple and this TSM squad. This 
very likable and and maybe upset oriented TSM team. So I, I hope that Maple continues to grow here, especially after all the shit that he had to go through the last year. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll give I'll give my uh, most surprising player to uh, Maple. Boom, bam. All right, there we go. One more segment to go here, and it's a, a staple. Thanks to our friends over at Esports Bet. It's time for face check all in where we make our pick. <clears throat> hey, there's our midseason awards. Thanks. Where we make our pick on uh, a couple of the games here this week. So, Dom, I'll let you go first. What is your all in bet for the week? Well, I always go first. I always go first, and then I get copied. Look, I'm 3 0 over here. I, I get yeah. to go I get to go second or, or third one of the all times. Right. All right. Hold on. I'm trying to open it right now. All right. right I'm go. opening it first. Uh, LS, do you want to go first then? I'm opening it. Wait, hold on. I I do. Uh, you know what? My bad. I do always make you go first, don't I? Yeah, then I get copied. We're, I don't copy you. We're on this segment. I generally don't copy you. Okay. Um, I got copied twice. Yeah, that's, that's true. Okay. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. Hell? The the Cloud9 games are given good odds for their opponents. You got Golden Guardians and TSM against them. Uh, uh I don't I yeah. I, if you want to pick an upset, it's probably one of those. But Yeah. Alright. Why can't I get to it? What the hell? This is so weird. I'm so sorry. That's okay. You don't I'll have to log first. in. You can just do it not logged in. Yeah. Yeah, I know, I know, but it's not letting me it's not letting me open the upcoming matches. Cuz Oh, okay, hold on. I can get it now. Hold on. Okay, hold on. Jeez, this is this is rough. Oh, the site's lagging. Joe can see this. The site's lagging. Get the duck in there. Okay. I'm get I'm Oh, huh? god. Sorry. Yeah, I'll go first. Give me, man, I've been wrong about all of my CLG picks. By the time, the times I pick them to win, they lose. The times that I pick them to lose, they've won. But I just, I just can't shake it, man. I just can't shake it. Give me CLG a slight underdog against TSM. It's uh, 2. <clears throat> 2 2.0 against TSM's 1.7 here. I'll, I'll pick the dog on this one. So uh, CLG, they, they went 2-1 and one this week. They've been streaky. So either they're going to win this game Oh, that, that doesn't make sense. I was going to say either they win this game or lose this game. Win this game and go 2-0 this week or lose this game and go 0-2 this week. So uh, last last week's El Clasico or yeah, two weeks ago, El Clasico was the most boring, under-hyped El Clasico, I think, in the history of the LCS. So let's let's make this one spicy as both these guys fight for the middle of the table. Uh, all right, LS, you ready, or do we go to Dom here? I mean, I, I like look, look. If you're if you're if you're trying to make free money, okay, you want a couple of bucks, okay. <laughs> it's not it's not good, but FlyQuest at one point one seven four versus Dig. I mean, you know, a couple of bucks, get yourself a free coffee. <laughs> Jeez. Jesus, imagine they're the they're, uh, that's gonna be the one game that. Uh, that FlyQuest actually just plays bad. Because, like, first, first <laughs> TSM, they didn't even play bad. But I feel like that's... <laughs> Use the 100 USDT risk-free bet on that. Get yourself a yeah. fucking <laughs> happy meal at McDonald's. <laughs> like... Yeah. I can nice. see it. Yeah, there it is. Looking right now. I don't... Do we have that? Okay, cool. They do have it. I'm trying to see... Is this the worst start in the history of the LCS? I think it is. Zero nine. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it can't. I mean, no one could do worse in the first nine games. So. <laughs> like, I, yeah, but are a, they? <laughs> it's impossible to do any worse than it. So like, they're I, digging. I gotta, you know, yeah, no it probably is. D All yeah. right. There, yeah, there it is. Detective Detective D gone on the case. I was I was just you know. Has I mean. anyone done worse than zero nine in the first nine games? Fuck. No, nah, dude. Like, I'm going? pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure we were the worst. For Golden Wait, Guardians, you went zero we were, ten in the first nine games. No, we went we went two two and seven, I think, because we beat uh, Team Liquid and a hundred thieves. So we we were like one in, we were one in seven, and then 
Yeah, one and seven and two and eight. Not bad. Or something like that. So Not bad. We, we, we salvaged something there. I, I'm pretty sure this is the worst start in the history of the LCS. They're 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 gonna be up there with Dragonborns of EU LCS. They they were they were bad. Sorry, Broken Shard. Yep. Yep. Okay. I've got mine. Right, so I'm ready. Free money over there for LS. What do you have for yours here, Dom? Yeah, so for mine, I am going to go with a uh, game time bet. And okay. the game time bet that I'm going to be uh, doing is on this. Uh, let me see. It is the uh, CLG versus Immortals game. I'm going to go over, I believe it's 32 minutes because I feel like neither of these teams can end. Um, it's either that or I'll go with kills. Hmm, actually, kills might be better. But CLG actually sometimes they don't have a lot of kills. Actually, scrap it, scrap it. We're not we're not doing either of them. I'm I'm changing. I'm changing. I'm gonna go with uh C C9 versus Golden Guardians. I'm gonna go kills over 23 and a half. I feel like with how these teams have been playing, I think they're both gonna put up fights. So I'll go over 23 and a half kills. C9 and Golden Guardians. Boom. 23 and a half kills. Yep. Let's keep the That's streak alive. That's a lot. Isn't that 23 a lot? and a half? 23 and a half is not that much, no. That's like pretty low. I mean, L LCS is normally pretty low. Like for okay. example, like Mad versus Astralis yesterday, game two. The game two was a complete stomp and how many kills were there in this game? I don't even know. They're not even showing. But yeah, I mean, normally like the lines are like 24 and a half, something like that. All right. Well, there you're all in picks. I was doing research. Someone in chat said, didn't Coast go one in 17? Yes, but they won a game in week two. So Damn. they were they were one in one in three. I mean, of, like, of course they couldn't win games, bro. They were playing against a prime. I will dominate. <laughs> of course, they lost both. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, of course, they're losing. Who did they beat? Did they beat? Uh, oh, they beat. Uh, I think that's Poe Belter's Winter Fox. Yeah. Wow, Winter Fox's roster is massive. Who who else was on that Winter Fox roster? We've done this before, but you, and, um, it's all the names so, that you think. Okay, so it's Avalon, yep. Helios. Yep. There's there's two more in both those positions. There's there's one more top laner and one more jungler. Glebe. Uh Glebe is on there, correct? Yeah, <laughs> Glebe is a, is a, so uh Pobelter Altec. Yep, yep. yep. There's one okay. more support. There, yeah, one more support, one more jungler, and one more top laner when all of them got moved. And the coach also played, and Alltech moved to support. This mm. is a mess. Paragon. Paragon. Yeah, that's right. Oh, way to go. Paragon was the AD, but, but you said there was a new support, right? Yeah, Alltech switched to support when Paragon stepped in, but there was another okay, so support other than Glebe. Let me see. I don't even remember where this player played um before winter fox it looks like he's a no before winter fox he played in korea he played for virtual throne gaming team olympus and team massive throwing before winter team fox. massive throwing <laughs> these are all korean challenger teams <laughs> there's no way you're gonna get this there's no way yeah i probably won't get this i don't know all right. Uh, there so a, there was another top laner. <clears throat> There's another top laner. He's a challenger guy for a little bit. Um, aggressive Aurelia player, known for his Aurelia, but never really made it back to the LCS. What happened to Shorter Race? Shorter Race. That's the other guy on this team. Very good. Very oh, good. but he played. But the, like, oh, but he's not actually on the team, right? Didn't Shorter Race just play like one game? Like uh, he was just subbed before the Koreans got there. Yeah, something the like other... that. Oh, okay. The other one, the other Dude, one I, is in that same bucket. Yeah, I don't know. It was uh, Flares, who used to oh. be known as Aetheris. So, like, so these people Dude, like are still actually around. Just, they played, played, played like one game though, right? No, no, no. Flares is still around. Sometimes I see him in my Twitch chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Flares, no, he's still around. Flares, oh, Flares okay. was on uh, um, Radiance with me. He was. Wow, he's so young. What? Yeah, the the Korean player that played support. Let me look at Twitch chat to see if any of them got it. I don't think any of them got it. No, no, no. 
The Korean Imagine. player that played support is Imagine. I, I I don't I don't even remember that. Wait, when the hell? Wait, when Flair was on. Wait, they Major beat Fox us like eight years ago. I lost a motherfucker named Imagine. Dude, you're <laughs> whatever, bro. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck. Anyone it. remember Renegades? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> anyone? Anyone remember? Oh my god. Wait, what? Cadrel was on Rene Rene Renegades. Yeah, this is a deep cut. Yep. All right. Well, I only anyway. know that because he talked about it in the um, but he was like super brief. He talked about it in uh, Thorin's new long form interview, which I watched. The fuck? I didn't know that. Yep. Seraph is back, isn't he a player? Wait. Is he? Yeah, he yeah, he he somehow at the age of 20 fucking 8 somehow managed to get on a Korean academy team. I don't even know how. He's he's the uh, shepherd, right? No, nah, every time old. you run into like I ran into him, I want to say a year ago, um in Korean like preseason. Dude, he is I, I can't imagine what his reputation is behind the scenes for toxicity in Korea. Well, that's like, um, man, I definitely thought this player was older than what he is. I mean, I guess he's had like a seven or eight year career. Over on Immortals Challenger is ADD. Um, the top he's player. young. He's super young. Yeah, he's young. But yeah. I, I remember him back on MVP when MVP was a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's only Dude, I'm living in, in the MVP house, by the way. Was the same house that they lived in, yes. I'm in the <laughs> same exact apartment. God damn. That's how you know that Ellis is rich now. He brought he bought the whole thing. There used to be 15 I fucking, I person home, MVP, bro. Exactly. It was I, a 20 it. person home and he's living there by himself. It's just, yeah. it's just him and Joe in a 20 person home. I, I always God wonder damn. when you're like, yeah, I, someone came over for boot camp or we came over, we, we made some content, we did like some five mans and we did some in houses all in the same house. Um, <laughs> I was always wondering that. Hello. Yeah, the person like, and that's how you know that I'm fucking broke. Like, the person that lived <laughs> here was was just worked at Dunkin' Donuts. He was like the CFO of Dunkin' Donuts. He just lived here by himself in my house. <laughs> He's the CFO. That doesn't sound broke. Yeah, but he was single. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> CFO of Dunkin' Donuts. Wait, really? Yeah, apparently. Well, yeah, I guess the CFO Kate of Jasmine? Dunkin' Donuts. No, no, no. There was a former CFO. C former CFO. I think she's new. Former. Alice is going to go down the history books. Dox he's going him? through. He's just uh, going to fucking dox him. Yeah, <laughs> I know. Instead bone? of Leaguepedia, he's going through uh, Duncanpedia. All right. Well, I think that does yeah. it for this episode. We got all of our picks in. We went down memory lane. We covered uh, some of the big topics. We'll see how Eminez does and how TL bounce back if they bounce back. And uh, you got our picks for all in. Last week. Uh, we had a little bit of a delay getting the video uploaded. Don't worry, this week we'll be on top of it. So I know that there's a couple of y'all that are very passionate about talking with uh, all the other commenters in our chat. So thank you for doing that and saying on top of it, we'll be on top of it as well. Make sure to like this video, subscribe. We haven't hit all the subscriptions that we should be hitting. So make sure to subscribe over to the Esports Pet channel. When you play, make sure to play responsibly and check your uh, local... Um, local uh, uh, restrictions on playing. Uh, Dom LS, where will people find you this week? Uh, Dom, we'll go with you first. Same place as always. I'm going to be on my stream. I'm going to do LEC, LCS. Yeah, there's actually a day off of, of LPL, like not a day where I'm skipping, but there's actually a day off this week, which is, I think, the only day off um, all split, like <clears throat> until the, the end of the split. So, yeah, uh, I'll just be doing my thing. Nice. LS. Um, I have LEC immediately after this, obviously. I think I'm joined by Crowny today. Um, so Wait, does Crowny he have to play? Oh, asshole. shit. Oh, never mind. Wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm clipping that, actually. That's, I'm, I'm telling, I'm telling Crowny that you just said this. Okay. <laughs> Tell him, bro. I say it to his face. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. All, All right. right. Yeah. Totally fine. That's totally fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, no, but uh, in reality, uh, yeah, so I do LEC today. Tomorrow, I don't. Tomorrow, there's nothing. And then Thursday, I do the LOL Park stream with Elo, Santa, and Shrimp. Um, so we'll be doing 1v1s and 2v2s versus Korean uh, people IRL. And then we'll, doing like, we'll be doing like Mr. Beast-esque uh, LOL trivia with people that want to play. That's cool. Mm -hmm. that, and that's at LOL Park? It's going to be live at Law Park, yeah. Riot's, like, giving us an area and stuff. Wow. Uh, 
So Korean English speaking fans that live in Korea might be visiting. Go check that out. Mm -hmm. Mall Park mm -hmm. is great. I, I mm -hmm. loved going. Um, awesome. Um, for me, I'm not going to be doing interviews this week, but I still have a couple that I need to dish out. I've got an interview with Boogie and TSM after their win against FlyQuest. And then I have a sit down with uh, Immortals coach X Smithy, where he, he literally asked me to ask the first question being, hey, so why the guys fucking suck? And he answers from there. So uh, I'll get those two up later this week. So oh. yeah, other than that, Thank you very much, y'all. Appreciate y'all for coming to watch as you do every week, and we'll catch you guys next week for more Face Check action. See ya.